Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll show you a thriller horror film, The Woman in Black. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with three young girls in their dresses, having a tea party with their porcelain dolls. Suddenly, they stare at the back wall like someone has called their attention. And then the three young girls look at each other. They stand up and go to the window wall without uttering a word. They each open the three windows and jump off their own accord. After a moment of silence, a female scream is heard, presumably after discovering their dead bodies. The scene then cuts to Arthur, a young lawyer with a cutter blade on his neck, ready to get ended all. However, he returns to his senses and stops himself from ending his life. Arthur goes downstairs after packing up, where his son gives a family drawing. Arthur bids goodbye to his son and reminds the nanny about the train tickets for them to meet in three days. Arthur heads to the law firm, where his boss warns him for the last time about the job because he won't be given an opportunity and in more if he fails. His boss assigns him to the case of the Eel Marsh House, whose owner, Alice, died a month ago. Alice and a boy who died at a young age, and Arthur must go through her many documents in the house to get her final will. Arthur's boss informs him about the local man, Jerome, whom they have been dealing with about the case, but Jerome has recently refused to cooperate. Arthur travels by train and dreams about when his son was born. The boy is perfectly alright, as the nurse pronounces, but the doctor apologizes as Arthur holds his newborn son in his arms. Arthur immediately looks at the bed, and his heart breaks, as the doctor uses the blood-stained sheet to cover the face of his late wife, who died giving birth to their son. As he wakes up, Arthur meets a fellow passenger, Sam, who offers him a lift into town. As Sam drops him off, he invites Arthur to have dinner with him and his wife tomorrow. The owner refuses to let Arthur stay at the local inn, claiming he hasn't booked a room. Fortunately, the owner's wife offers the attic to him, as the weather is grotesque outside. As they climb the stairs, Arthur informs the woman that he needs a place to stay for a week, because his son and the nanny will travel to join him in three days. They reach the attic, which turns out to be the place where the three young girls jump from the film's beginning. The following day, while on his way, Arthur notices that the townspeople seem terrified and sullen. The parents around town tell their children to get inside the house when they take a look at Arthur. He dismisses that and goes to the town solicitor, Jerome, who recommends he leaves town as soon as possible. Jerome hands in the documents to him, but Arthur needs to go through the paperwork in the Eel Marsh house, which will make him stay at least three days. Jerome's friend is waiting outside his carriage to take Arthur to the train station. However, Arthur bribes him to take him to the Eel Marsh house. They take the thin causeway that zigzags among the marshes, linking the town to the lonely, isolated mansion. The friend leaves Arthur just outside the mansion's estate and tells him that he will be back at 5 in the afternoon because of the high tide. Arthur enters the property, which clearly has not been properly cared for, and wanders around. He opens the windows before settling to work in front of a pile of paper. He finds the death certificate of Alice's son, indicating that the boy was drowned in the marshland, but his body was never found. This reminds him of his own son, so Arthur puts the drawing in his coat. Just then, Arthur hears something, so he follows the sound from upstairs. He finds a nest of ravens in one of the bedrooms, and one of them has fallen out of it. Arthur places the raven back to its nest, when a crow suddenly rushes in flying, startling him. Arthur opens the window wide to let the crow out, but instead, he sees what seems to be a woman in black, standing in the garden among the tombstones. The raven catches his attention again, when it flies around and lands on the bed. When he looks out again, the cemetery is empty, with no woman in black to be seen. So Arthur rushes out to check who's on the property. The thick sea mist prevents him from seeing anything. The feeling that something terrible is about to happen strikes him as he hears faint voices and terrified screams. But then everything vanishes as the friend appears in the mist to pick him up. The friend drops him off at the local police station as Arthur requested, where he claims to the constable that he heard about an accident. Constable tells him it's impossible as no one has lived in the causeway for nine years since the boy drowned in the marshes. However, Arthur is certain as he has seen a woman in the Eel Marsh house. This seems to scare the constable away, making him excuse himself for a moment. While the constable's away, two young boys arrive with a very sick girl. The boys ask for help for their sister, Veronica, who apparently has drank a poisonous substance. Arthur immediately calls the constable, but Veronica suddenly coughs up, and within a matter of seconds, the little girl miserably leaves the living world. Arthur cannot help but feel the agony, as he watches Veronica's father hold her body as if she's still alive. After the painful scene, Arthur returns to the inn, where he drinks with the owner's wife. Just like everybody else, there's fear and worry in her eyes, as she pleads with Arthur not to return to the Eel March house, and instead spend his time with his son. Later that day, Arthur meets up with Sam in a tombstone, where Sam's son's remains lie. Sam visits his son shortly, before walking away with Arthur. Sam asks him not to talk about Veronica's death, or mention the subject of children around his wife. Sam's wife warmly welcomes Arthur into their fancy home, and even offers him a room to stay in, until he gets his job done. 
Arthur is not even there for long. But he senses that something's not right with Sam's wife. She treats her twin dogs like children, and acts like her dead son is still alive. Suddenly, Sam's wife throws a fit by carving a drawing on the table, prompting Sam to sedate her. After that awkward conversation at dinner, Arthur still stays at the house. As they drink by the fireplace, Sam says that their small town has many superstitions, but he must not believe it, as they all eventually go to heaven when they die. Later that night, as Arthur wanders, he sees the carving on the table. It depicts a person dead by the rope on its neck. The following day, Arthur heads to Jerome's house again, looking for him, but he finds something else. A terrified girl imprisoned in a room in the basement tells Arthur to leave her alone, as he was the one who killed Veronica. Although confused, Arthur leaves. As Sam drives Arthur around in his motor car, the townspeople stop them, especially the inn owner, who tells Arthur that his refusing to leave is the cause of Veronica's death. They know that Arthur has seen the woman in the Eel Marsh house. Sam dismisses their pain as superstition, and the inn owner rebuts, questioning him if it's a superstition that took his son. This seems to enrage Sam, but he calms himself down and maneuvers his motor car backward before driving past the townspeople. On the way to the Eel Marsh house, the two drive past the cross planted at the side of the watery path. As they reach the property, Arthur refuses Sam's offer to pick him up at 11, as he prefers to stay, so Sam lends his dog instead. Arthur lights some candles around the house and tries to open a locked room. However, none of the keys work, so he turns his attention to the heavy box, with Nathaniel's name written on it. He finds many documents there, so he drops them on the floor, looking for more paperwork under the bed. But then he stands up in panic after seeing a hand on the bathroom door. Arthur checks it out, but upon finding nothing, he dismisses it. He goes downstairs and makes a Davriotype go around. For a split second, he sees the eyes of the woman in black. Again, he dismisses it and starts going through the documents and photographs. While examining them, the dog suddenly begins barking, so Arthur follows it, leading to the tombstones of Nathaniel and Janet. As Arthur and the dog return to the mansion, Arthur sees the woman in black retreating from the window. Arthur immediately heads to that room and looks out. As he sees the dilapidated view, the woman in black appears right by his back, but she quickly disappears. Even though he can't see her, Arthur looks around. He finds a wooden box, containing cards addressed to Nathaniel, signed by his birth mother. Arthur takes it all downstairs and begins going through it, and these documents reveal the truth. It turns out, Nathaniel's birth mother, Janet, is Alice's biological sister. Alice and her husband adopted Nathaniel and raised him as their own, as Janet was deemed mentally unfit to raise her child. Through the correspondence letters, Arthur learns that Janet was very displeased that she wasn't allowed to visit her son because of Alice's refusal. Janet blamed Alice for her son's death, and her anger only grew when Alice didn't give Nathaniel a proper burial. The cross on the side of the watery path is for Nathaniel, as his body was never found. Another death certificate reveals that Janet committed suicide by hanging herself in that same house in the nursery room. Before she died, Janet vowed to never forgive her sister, and told herself that she would find a way to be with her son, Nathaniel. Arthur takes a break after his discovery. While he's asleep, the woman in black appears and moves slowly toward him. As she gets close, the dog suddenly barks, waking up Arthur. As she disappears, Arthur finds scratches on Alice and her husband's face in one of the photographs. Alone, Arthur walks along the dark hallway, checking if there's anyone close by. He sees the locked room again. When he fails to open it, Arthur takes something to open it up from downstairs. However, as he returns, the door is already mysteriously unlocked and wide open. Arthur takes a candle and an axe before coming inside to see a rocking chair moving by itself. For a second, it appears that the woman in black is the one rocking the chair. Arthur wanders around the room and finds something behind the wallpaper. He tears it off, revealing the phrase, You could save him, written in blood. Arthur moves on to another room and looks out the window to see the cross. However, he sees something else. A boy, presumably Nathaniel, slowly emerges from the mud and begins walking to the mansion. Suddenly, the shrill screaming face of Janet appears in the window, terrifying him. He quickly returns downstairs after hearing the dog's continuous barking. Someone is aggressively trying to open the front door, and when he goes outside, Arthur finds the dead children rotten and anguished, standing on the marshes. Arthur immediately returns inside, where he finds black footprints of the woman in black. Arthur follows the footprints trail, leading to a room where he sees an apparition of Janet hanging herself. Arthur picks up the candle that he has dropped from shock and fear, and lights it with a match, only to see Nathaniel in front of him, covered with mud. Arthur immediately leaves the room, but then he sees the woman in black approaching from the corridor's other end. Left with no choice, Arthur encloses himself in a room, but then Nathaniel slowly emerges from the bed. Arthur quickly runs downstairs to leave, only to find Sam standing at the front door, ready to pick him up. As the sun rises, Sam and Arthur return to the town. On the way back, Arthur insists that he believes everything he has seen in that house, but Sam doesn't believe him, as he believes it's all a mind trick. 
As soon as they arrive, they see the commotion about Jerome's burning house. Arthur bravely runs inside after seeing Jerome's wife, screaming for their daughter. He finds the girl inside and tries to stave her. However, he also finds the woman in black standing in the corner, and without a word, the girl sets herself on fire. Arthur can only watch her burn to death, as he can't do anything. Back at Sam's mansion, Sam reveals that the girl was conceived after Jerome's first child's death. They locked her up to protect her from the woman in black, but they failed. Later that day, Arthur converses with Sam's wife by her son's tombstone. She shares that her son drowned when he was playing at the beach with his friends. She looks at Arthur and reveals that the woman in black is always there when those children befall to their deaths. Suddenly, Sam's wife throws another fit and carves another picture on the stone while repeatedly saying that she's coming. Just then, Sam arrives and catches his wife just in time as she loses consciousness. Meanwhile, Arthur sees the drawing depicting him with his son beside a train engine. As Sam drives his motor car fastly, he reveals the truth. He made himself believe that the woman in black is a superstition because he couldn't accept the fact that his son had died and was lost. In an attempt to end the deaths, Arthur convinces Sam to help him find Nathaniel's body and reunite him with Janet by giving the boy a proper burial. So later that night, they stop at the marshland, where Arthur ties a rope around his waist, which is connected to Sam's motor car. After that, he goes into the sticky mud near the cross and dives in as he feels something beneath his feet. After a while, Sam pulls Arthur out of the mud, and together with him is what seems to be a carriage, and within it is Nathaniel's body. The motor car cannot hold the carriage for long, so Arthur clambers over it and carries Nathaniel's corpse as the carriage slides back into the mud. They take Nathaniel back to the Eel Marsh house and place him in the nursery, where Arthur lures Janet, aka the woman in black, to him. While Arthur waits for her, Sam sees his dead son entering a room. Sam follows him expectedly, but as soon as he enters, the door slams shut, imprisoning him. Sam bangs on the door shouting for Arthur, but Arthur cannot hear him. Meanwhile, the room gets even more darkened, as Janet appears and screams at Arthur, scaring the shit out of him. However, she suddenly disappears, and the door unlocks, freeing Sam. After that, Sam and Arthur open Janet's tomb and place Nathaniel's body on top of hers, reuniting the mother with her child. As they leave, Janet's voice echoes around the house, saying she will never forgive the wrong she suffered. They then drive to the train station, where Arthur's son and the nanny arrive. Arthur instructs the nanny to get the tickets back to London as his job is done. As she does so, Arthur thanks Sam and bids goodbye to him. But then, Arthur sees the woman in black staring at him while his son walks on the rail tracks. Arthur immediately jumps off the tracks to save his son as he sees the oncoming train. Fear and shock are evident in Sam and the nanny's eyes as the train runs over the rail tracks. As the train passes in front of him, Sam sees all the dead children and the screaming woman in black on the other side of the track. The film ends with Arthur opening his eyes, holding his son in his arms in an empty train station, where they reunite with Arthur's wife in the afterlife. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.